When I first started tablet weaving, the very first pattern I wanted to weave was what we colloquially and lovingly referred to as the Dublin Dragons. The most popular version is this super cute turning card pattern using only 20 cards. I like it a lot, I think continuous patterns like this are very fun to weave. But like a certain subset of tablet weavers, I got more and more interested in the original source material the more I learned. And the original Dublin Dragons, uncovered in Fishamble Street and dated to the latter part of the 10th century, is a gold brocade ribbon using 31 tablets. And friends, this little treasure is only 9 millimeters wide. To try to see if I can get anywhere close to that width, I am using thin 100 over 2 silk thread for the warp. Yes, I am weaving with sewing thread at this point, and not a very thick one either. I am warping just over a meter of warp on my squeaky winding friend because even though I lose a significant percentage at the beginning and end of my warp, these things are still so time consuming that half a meter, if I get that much, will be a great plenty. Warp wound, let us turn to our tablets. I have tablets made from different woods, so I can split my deck into edge cards, side cards, center cards, side cards, and edge cards again. I find this makes counting a little easier. This works just as well with homemade cardboard cards with different colored edges though. With no pattern in the threads of our cards, we can just thread them all from the same side. We can arrange them to avoid twist later. Oh, but always not your ends. Once our cards have been threaded, I try to even out the tension in my warp before I tie a second knot. I can't really see it from the picture, but it looks like maybe the threads at the sides swap direction in each column in the original. We'll go with that and flip every other edge card 180 degrees for weave stability, but leave the center all threaded the same way for brocade smoothness. I've seen it done both ways, so you do you. Now for the part I have been looking forward to. It is time to set up our loom. I usually weave backstrap, where you tie a ribbon about your person and use that to tension your warp. But I've had this idea for a few weeks to test if my warp winder can also be used as a small tablet loom. After all, the loom uncovered in the Osebar grave is basically two sticks some distance apart. Later medieval illustrations of tablet weaving looms follow in this vein, and while mine is both shorter and uh, a tad more rickety, I don't see any good reason why it wouldn't basically work the same once I pop the top off. I start off by tying the side I will be weaving from on one side. 
and then I do my best to balance the tension in all 31 cards before looping the excess around my loom in whichever way maintains that tension. Next, I am filling my shuttle with the same silk I am weaving with since I don't have an even thinner thread in a similar color. In addition to that, I have a smaller shuttle filled with our shiny gold thread. Last up, before we get to weaving, I am using an old hand sewing tip to practice even stitches. With a waterproof marker, I am leaving two dots, nine millimeters apart, on my thumb so I have a handy dandy little ruler easily accessible while working. But before we start brocading, I want to weave just a few centimeters or so to give us a solid foundation. Did I mention that brocade is slow? Because it is really slow. Not slow because it is difficult though, just slow because you need to pass your first shuttle through the main shed and then divide your pack of tablets into brocade or not for your second brocading shuttle to pass through every single round. And then we just repeat that, according to the pattern, about infinity million times. It is remarked upon that especially gold brocade, being so much more valuable than silver, was beaten especially hard while weaving to ensure really dense details. I do maintain that brocade is an easy tablet weaving technique though. Unlike threaded patterns, a mistake will not carry over to the next row, so you may be bothered by it, but you can just continue as if nothing happened. That also means that we do not have to do a repetitive pattern like I'm doing here. You could have an ever-changing scenery like storytelling tapestries. Just make sure not to brocade over too many continuous tablets at once, or you will get floating threads that easily catch and snag on other things. Honestly, here we see one of the reasons I love tablet weaving specifically and weaving in general. If you saw my previous tablet weaving video, I was weaving with some thicker wool yarn. For this ribbon though, I am still using all the same cards and tools, only my yarn thickness is different, and we get a remarkable difference in details. Once it becomes difficult to keep turning our tablets in one direction, I like to do a 180 degree turn in the other direction before continuing in that opposite direction. The brocade is completely separate from that, so we can do this whenever. I am really enjoying loom life especially for tiny detailed projects like this where you can go for a long time before needing to move anything. It is much easier to just plop down to do a sequence whenever. But as you can see, I am nowhere near as elegant as those illuminated medieval ladies. Gremlin loom life it is. When we do need to move our warp along, I first secure the cards with my ridiculously big safety pin. Then loosen the unwoven part of the warp so I can pull the finished ribbon further back and then re-tension the end. This would be a little faster with modern tension tools, but Viking Age technology absolutely works too. And then we just continue. After some getting to know the pattern, I find I can do a sequence of 18 rows in slightly fewer minutes, which is slightly less than a centimeter, so we are weaving at a breakneck pace of about 3 centimeters an hour. Once we have reached the desired length or the end of our warp, it is time to put in some finishing touches. First, 
I fasten the brocade thread by weaving it through the main shed a few times. Then, like we started out, I am weaving a section just plain. To make sure our ends do not unravel, I am securing the warp on either side. Braiding more than three strands was never my strong suit, so I am just doing buttonhole stitches along sections of the warp to make my tassel. Madhavi Pasanen is the queen of pretty finishings though. She has a video on Instagram if you wish to check out a proper Iron Age finishing technique. And at last we cut our ribbon from the loom and admire our finished product. At 11 millimeters, we ended up being a bit above the 9 millimeter width of the original, but part of that is my own fault, trying to cram in smaller dragons by loosening the tension a bit too much. I do think this is a good silk weight for reproductions of a similar sort. But that's it for this time. Thank you so much to my growing number of patrons who help make this possible. If you wish to watch my videos 24 hours before everyone else, that is the place to go. Until next time!